Welcome, dear listeners, to the veiled and shadowy paths of history, where the line between the known and the unknown blurs into the mists of Pendle Hill. Nestled in the heart of Lancashire, England, this ominous landscape harbors tales that have whispered through the ages, tales of darkness, witchcraft, and unexplained phenomena. Tonight, we embark on a journey back to a time when superstition ruled the minds of men and women alike, to the year 1612, where the infamous Bendel Witch Trials cast a long, chilling shadow over the land. As night falls and the wind howls through the barren trees, we invite you to draw closer. Let the fire's warmth seep into your bones, for the story we are about to unfold is not for the faint of heart. It is a tale woven from the threads of fear, apprehension, and ambiguity, where ghosts of the past linger in the silence between our words, eager to make their presence known. Here, on Pendle Hill, where the air is thick with the echoes of the condemned, we will uncover the secrets that have been guarded by time. We will follow a group of friends drawn to the hell's haunting beauty and its dark history only to find themselves ensnared in a nightmare that transcends the boundaries of time and reality. They will confront the unseen, wrestle with their fears, and perhaps discover that the true horror lies not in the spirits that roam the night, but in the capacity for cruelty that resides in the human heart. So, steady your nerves and open your mind, for we are about to step into the shadows of Pendle Hill where history and horror intertwine, and the tales of the past refuse to be forgotten. Welcome to the Pendle Witch Trials Podcast. The legend awakens in the heart of Lancashire, England, where the skies often wear a cloak of grey, lies Pendle Hill, a place setched with tales of the macabre and the mysterious, its slopes and valleys, covered in a patchwork of heath and bracken, have stood silent witness to the passage of centuries. Let it is not the beauty of the landscape that draws the curious and the brave, but the whispers of its dark history, a history steeped in witchcraft, trials, and executions that have left an indelible mark upon the land. It was on such an overpast day, with the autumn winds murmuring through the trees, that a group of friends found themselves at the foot of Pendle Hill, drawn by the thrill of adventure and tales of the supernatural. They sought to peel back the layers of legend and see for themselves what truths might lie hidden beneath. Alex, Jordan, Sam, and Mia, each fueled by a mixture of skepticism and fascination, began their ascent, their laughter and chatter a stark contrast to the brooding silence of the hill. As they climbed, the landscape around them began to change. The friendly chatter of birds fell away, replaced by a silence so profound it seemed almost a physical presence. The air grew chill, and a path, once clear, twisted and turned, as a fleeting them not towards the summit, but into the very heart of the hell's mysteries. Alex, the de facto leader, 
pressed on, driven by a desire to debunk the myths. Jordan, ever the enthusiast for the paranormal, scanned the horizon for signs of ghostly apparitions. While Sam and Mia shared uneasy glances, their initial excitement giving way to apprehension. They had all heard the stories of figures cloaked in black, of chilling screams in the dead of night, of a malevolent presence that seemed to watch from just beyond sight. As the shadows lengthened and the summit loomed closer, an unspoken unease began to settle over the group. The wind, now a persistent whisper, seemed to carry voices, words just beyond comprehension, urging them forward, or perhaps warning them back. The history of Pendle Hill, with its tales of the Pendle witches, those twelve souls accused of witchcraft and consigned to the gallows, weighed heavily upon them, for it was said that the hill was their domain, where their spirits roamed, bound to the very earth that had witnessed their demise. The friends found themselves standing atop the hill, the landscape sprawling before them, a tapestry of the mundane and the magical. Here, where the veil between worlds was thin, they pondered the truth of the tales. Was Pendle Hill merely a hill, its stories the product of an era steeped in superstition and fear? Or was there something more, a truth shrouded in the mists, waiting to be discovered? As night began to fall, wrapping its dark cloak around the world, the group decided to press on, to camp near the summit, and perhaps come face to face with the mysteries of Pendle Hill. Little did they know, their journey was just beginning, and the night ahead would test the bounds of their skepticism and belief. For Pendle Hill had secrets, secrets that it guarded jealously, secrets that could only be revealed under the cover of darkness. Thus, as the first stars pierced the twilight, our group of friends found themselves on the brink of an adventure that would blur the lines between the past and the present, between the realm of the living and the dead. And as the wind rose to a howl, the legend of Pendle Hill awoke, eager to tell its tale to those daring enough to listen. whispers of the past. As dawn's first light seeped through the veil of night, our intrepid explorers descended Pendle Hill, drawn by an insatiable curiosity and a quest for understanding. The morning mist, like a sea of whispers, clung to the earth, shrouding the landscape in an ethereal beauty. Dead. Beneath this serene façade lay stories of darkness and despair, stories that the group was about to uncover. In the village at the Hell's base, time seemed to stand still. The ancient stone cottages and narrow, winding streets spoke of centuries past, of lives lived and lost in the shadow of the hill. It was here in a quaint, time-worn pub, that the group encountered Edward, an old historian whose life's work was the study of Pendle Hill and its infamous witch trials. With a voice as rugged as the landscape and eyes 
that had seen much. Edward unfolded the tale of the Pendle Witches. It was a time of fear, he began, a time when superstition clouded judgment, and accusations of witchcraft were enough to seal one's fate. He spoke of the twelve accused, of Elias and Ervice, Elizabeth Southerns, and the others, each name a thread in the tapestry of tragedy that had enfolded on the hill. The group listened, rapt, as Edward recounted the events that led to the trials. A peddler's curse, a child's sickness, milk that soured. In those fearful times, such occurrences were not mere misfortunes, but evidence of malevolent witchcraft. The accused, mostly women, were said to have gathered on Pendle Hill, holding Sabbaths and consorting with dark powers, casting spells that brought harm to their neighbors. The trials, Edward continued, his voice lowering, were a spectacle of fear and hysteria. Testimonies were twisted, confessions extracted under duress. Justice, if it could be called that, was swift and merciless. He paused, the weight of the story heavy in the air. Ten were hanged at Gallows Hill, their lives ending as a warning to others. Two died in the darkness of their cells, never seeing the light of day again. The group sat in silence, the reality of the past casting a somber shadow over them. They had sought the thrill of the supernatural, only to find themselves confronted with the true horror of human nature, the capacity for fear to breed cruelty and injustice. Edward's tale was not just a recounting of historical events, but a reminder. Pendle Hill, he said, is more than a place of natural beauty or paranormal intrigue. It is a monument to the lives lost, a call to remember the dangers of superstition and the importance of compassion and understanding. As they left a pop, the group carried with them not just the tale of the Pendle Witches, but a deeper understanding of the hell's dark history. The shadows that lay across the landscape seemed different now, not just the play of light and dark, but a reflection of the complex tapestry of human emotion and belief that had shaped the land. The sun had risen higher chasing away the last remnants of mist, bet the story of the Pendle Witches had left an indelible mark on the group. With each step back towards the hill, they felt the weight of history upon them, a history of fear, but also of resilience. And as they continued their journey, they knew that the echoes of the past would accompany them, whispering of times, when the boundary between the known and the unknown was governed by the shadows of superstition and the light of truth. The Gathering Storm As the sun dipped below the horizon, a cloak of darkness enveloped Pendle Hill, transforming its familiar contours into a landscape of shadows and whispers. The group, now carrying the weight of the hill's tragic history, found themselves drawn back to its summit compelled by a desire to confront the mysteries that lay hidden in the night. 
Despite the warnings from locals, echoed by the historian Edward's solemn tones, Alex, Jordan, Sam, and Mia were determined. They pitched their tents in a clearing, a stone's throw from the very spot where, centuries ago, the accused witches were said to have held their sinister sabbaths. The air, once filled with the light chatter of day, grew heavy with silence, broken only by the crackle of their campfire. As night deepened, the group settled around the fire, the flickering flames casting eerie shadows that danced on their faces. The comfort of the fire's warmth did little to ease the growing sense of unease. It was Jordan who first noticed the noises a distant, barely discernible murmur, like the whispering of many voices blending with the wind. At first, they dismissed it as the natural sounds of the night, but as the hours passed, the noises grew more distinct, more unsettling. Sam pointed out the sifting shadows, not those cast by their campfire, but others, unattached to any source moving with purpose through the trees. They seemed to encircle the camp, drawing ever closer, then retreating, as if testing the group's resolve. Mia, usually the most rational among them, whispered what they all feared. It feels like we're being watched. The atmosphere became charged with apprehension. Every rustle of leaves, Every snap of a twig sent jolts of fear through their hearts. The night, so sought after for its mysteries, now held them in a grip of fear they could not escape. They gathered closer to the fire, seeking safety in its light, that the darkness beyond seemed to press in, oppressive and alive with unseen watchers. Alex, in an attempt to dispel the mounting terror, suggested they might be experiencing the very paranormal phenomena that had drawn them to Pendle Hill. But his words, meant to comfort, fell flat, lost in the realization that some legends, some tales of the past, might hold more truth than they had ever imagined. The decision to camp near the summit once made in defiance of local warnings, now seemed a grave miscalculation. Let, retreating into the night seemed equally perilous. They were caught in a limbo of fear, with the past and the present blurring into a nightmare that was all too real. As the night wore on, the strange occurrences intensified. The inexplicable noises became a cacophony, the sifting shadows, a menacing presence that seemed almost to breathe. The sense of being watched grew into a certainty, an oppressive feeling that they were not alone, that the spirits of the past lingered, curious or perhaps malevolent. In this atmosphere of dread, the group faced the long hours until dawn, each moment stretching into eternity. They clung to the hope that sunlight would dispel the shadows and the fear. But the night was long, and the hill had awakened. What secrets the darkness held, what truths or lies whispered on the wind, they could not know. All they could do was wait, watchful and wary, as the gathering storm of history and horror enveloped them on Pendle Hill.
unseen forces. As the clock of the cosmos ticked toward midnight, the veil between the present and the past on Pendle Hill seemed to wear thin, fraying at the edges, allowing the unseen and the unheard to slip through. The group, huddled around the dying embers of their campfire, felt the air around them charge with an electric city that spoke of untold mysteries and hidden dangers. The first to experience the visions was Jordan, whose fascination with the paranormal have led him to Pendle Hill's shadowed slopes. His eyes, reflecting the flicker of the fire, suddenly widened in disbelief. Before him, the clearing transformed, the modern trappings of their pimp fading away to reveal a scene from another time. Figures cloaked in a garb of the 17th century emerged from the woods, their faces obscured, gathering around an unseen focal point with an air of solemnity and purpose. One by one, the others began to see. Alex, Sam, and Mia, each caught in their own silent vision, watched as the past played out before them. They saw the witches of Pendle Hill, not as malevolent specters, but as people men and women, young and old drawn together by bonds of belief and fear. They witnessed the rituals, the pasting of circles, the murmuring of spells, a glimpse into a world governed by different understandings, where the lines between magic and religion curse and prayer, were indistinguishably blurred. Amidst this ghostly reenactment, Mia stumbled upon something half buried in the earth, a book, its leather cover worn by time, but sealed with a clasp that gleamed under the moonlight. With trembling hands, she opened it, revealing pages filled with writings that twisted and turned, some in a script, that was familiar, yet unreadable, others adorned with symbols and diagrams that hinted at knowledge long forgotten. The group gathered around the book, the visions of the past moment terribly forgotten. They poured over the pages, each word, each symbol, pulsing with a power that seemed to reach out touching their minds with whispers of ancient spells, of protections and purses, of a world where belief had the power to shape reality. As midnight passed, the intensity of the paranormal activity reached its zenith. The air thrummed with energy. The ground beneath them vibrated with unseen forces. The visions became more vivid more urgent. They sought a fear in the eyes of the accused, the resolve of those who stood against them, and the sorrow of lives caught in a crossfire of ignorance and superstition. The discovery of the book among the ruins of Pendle Hill was no coincidence. It was as if the hill itself had revealed its secrets, entrusting them with a piece of its storied past. Dead, with this gift, came questions. Who had owned the beck? What knowledge did it contain? And, most importantly, why had it been revealed to them? As the group sat in silence, the weight of their discovery pressing upon them, the boundary between the past and the present seemed to blur even further. They realized that they were not mere observers of history. They had become part of the story of Pendle Hill, a story that was still being written. The night wore on, the visions faded, but the sense of being watched, of being part of something much larger and more mysterious, remained. With the book in their possession, the friends knew that their journey on Pendle Hill was far from over. 
They were now keepers of its secrets, drawn into the weave of its dark and tumultuous history. A history that had shown them the power of belief and the shadows it could past. The trial, in the darkest hours before dawn, as the boundaries between epics became ever more tenuous, the group found themselves pulled into a vortex of time, a whirlwind that deposited them into the heart of the 1612 witch trials. The transition was seamless let joring, the modern world slipping away like a dream upon waking leaving them stranded in a reality far removed from their own. Alex, Jordan, Sam, and Mia, now clad in the coarse garments of the 17th century, stood in a crude, dimly lit courtroom, a throng of hostile faces surrounding them. The air was thick with anticipation and fear. The murmurs of the crowd a cacophony that bore down on them with the weight of impending doom. They were no longer observers of history. They had become participants, cast in the roles of the accused. Their fates intertwined with those who had walked this path centuries ago. The trial commenced with an oppressive solemnity the magistrate's voice cutting through the air like a knife. Accusations were hurled at them, each more fantastical and damning than the last consorting with the devil, casting malevolent spells, causing illness and misfortune to befall their neighbors. The evidence, if it could be called that, was a collection of hearsay and superstition and it was presented with a conviction that left no room for doubt or debate. The group, bewildered and disoriented, struggled to comprehend their predicament. How could they defend themselves against charges so alien to their understanding, in a time governed by beliefs that they knew to be false? They sought evidence of their innocence in a world that had no concept of it, where the mere accusation of witchcraft was tantamount to a death sentence. Jordan, you had always harbored a deep interest in the paranormal, found himself grappling with the reality of the fears that once seemed so distant. Mia, whose rational mind rebelled against the absurdity of the situation, searched desperately for a way to break through the ignorance and hysteria that fueled the trial. Sam and Alex, caught between disbelief and a growing sense of dread, realized that their very lives depended on navigating the intricacies of a bygone judicial system that operated on fear rather than fact. As the trial progressed, the group was forced to confront not only the accusations, but also the deeper, more insidious nature of the fear that pervaded the courtroom. They realized that the witch trials were less about the guilt or innocence of the accused, and more about the community's need to find a scapegoat for their misfortunes, a tangible enemy in the face of invisible threats. In this vivid reenactment of the past, the friends experienced firsthand the fear, desperation, and helplessness of those accused of witchcraft. 
They felt the sting of betrayal, the pain of false accusations, and a crushing weight of a system designed not to seek the truth, but to purge the community of its perceived evils. As the first light of dawn began to filter through the cracks in the courthouse walls, the group found themselves at a crossroads. To save themselves, they would need to tap into the very essence of what it meant to be accused in such a time, drawing upon their knowledge of history, their understanding of human nature, and their unyielding desire for justice and truth. The trial, a nightmare from which they could not awaken, challenged them to find a way back to their own time, to escape the clutches of a past that was all too eager to claim them as its own. In the shadows of the courtroom, with their fates hanging in the balance, they understood that their journey through the mists of Pendle Hill was far from over. It was a test of their courage, their convictions, and their ability to stand together against the darkness that sought to engulf them. Escape from Pendle Hell As the first light of dawn began to paint the sky with hues of pink and orange, the group found themselves at the edge of despair, their spirits tethered to the merciless wheel of history. The trial had taken its toll, leaving them drained, both physically and emotionally. Yet the imminent approach of dawn brought with it a sliver of hope. It was this hope, fragile and flickering, that spurred them into action, igniting a desperate plan to break the cycle and escape Pendle Hill's relentless grasp. The old, leather-bound book, discovered amongst the ruins, and filled with cryptic writings and spells, lay open before them. Its pages, once mysterious and indecipherable, now seemed to whisper directly to their souls, offering a glimmer of salvation. With the trial behind them, and the specter of doom looming large, they resolved to use the spells contained within the ancient tome to appeal to the spirits that haunted the hill, and seek an end to the haunting that had ensnared them. Mia, whose hands had first unearthed the book, took the lead, her voice steady as she recited the words of a spell meant to appease the restless spirits. The others joined in, their voices melding into a chant that rose into the pre-dawn air a plea for forgiveness and understanding, an acknowledgement of the pain and suffering that had permeated the land. As they chanted, the air around them began to shimmer, the boundary between the past and the present blurring even further. The spirits of those accused, the very souls they had sought to understand and honor, manifested before them not as fearsome apparitions, but as ethereal figures, their expressions etched with sorrow and longing. The group, standing firm in the face of the unknown, continued their incantations, the words of the spell wrapping around the spirits like a warm embrace. They spoke of healing, of release, of the bonds of fear and suspicion that had held both the living and the dead in a vice-like grip. 
as the final words of the spell dissipated into the morning air. A profound silence enveloped the hill. The spirits, their countenances softening, began to fade from view, their departure marked by a sense of peace that cascaded over the landscape. The oppressive atmosphere that had dominated Pendle Hill lifted, replaced by a lightness, as if the very earth itself could breathe once more. A group, exhausted yet exhilarated, watched as the sun crested the horizon, its rays banishing the last shadows of the night. They had done what they set out to achieve, breaking the cycle of fear and superstition that had ensnared both the living and the dead. The book, its purpose fulfilled, lay quietly at their feet, its pages now blank, the spells and writings gone, as if they had never been. As they made their way down from the summit, the hell seemed to bid them farewell, its slopes no longer a place of dread but a testament to the power of understanding and compassion. They left Pendle Hill changed, not just by the ordeal they had endured, but by the knowledge that the past, with all its pain and mystery, could be confronted and appeased. Their journey had begun as a quest for adventure, a desire to probe the mysteries of the supernatural. Yet. In the end, they found something far more profound a connection to the human spirit, to the resilience and courage that defines our shared history. Pendle Hill, with its dark past and tales of witchcraft, had revealed its secrets, not to frighten or to condemn, but to teach, to remind them of the importance of empathy and the enduring strength of the human heart. A new dawn. As the sun climbed higher, casting its golden light over the landscape, the group made their way down from Pendle Hill, each step away from its summit, marking a return not just to the physical world they knew, but to a new understanding of themselves and the past. They had survived the night, a night that had tested their courage their beliefs, and their very perception of reality. Now, in the light of day, they reflected on the journey that had taken them from mere curiosity seekers to witnesses of history's profound and often painful complexities. The experience on Pendle Hill, particularly the vivid reenactment of the witch trials, had provided them with an unparalleled glimpse into the past. It was as if the accused witches themselves had reached across the centuries, entrusting the group with a message that transcended time, a message of caution and enlightenment. Alex, ever the skeptic, found himself grappling with the realization that history was not just a series of events recorded in Bex, but a living, breathing entity, capable of echoing its lessons into the present. Jordan, whose interest in the paranormal had initially led them to Pendle Hill, now viewed the supernatural not just as an avenue for adventure, but as a bridge to understanding the human condition. Sam and Mia, reflecting on their roles in reenactment, were struck by the palpable fear 
and desperation they had experienced. They understood now that the story of the Pendle Witches was not merely a tale of superstition and folklore, but a stark reminder of the dangers of hysteria, of the ease with which fear can morph into injustice. Together, they realized that their night on Pendle Hill had been a journey through the shadows of human nature, a confrontation with the ease with which society can be led astray by fear, and the tragic consequences of unchecked hysteria. The trials they had witnessed, and the spectral figures of the accused they had encountered, served as poignant reminders of the cost of ignorance and the importance of empathy, critical thinking, and justice. As they shared their reflections, a resolve took shape among them, a desire to share their experience, to ensure that the lessons gleaned from the depths of Pendle Hill's past were not lost to the annals of history. They recognized the responsibility that came with their unique experience, the duty to advocate for the preservation of memory, for the recognition of the injustices of the past, and for the vigilance required to prevent such tragedies from repeating. The group understood that the true horror of Pendle Hill lay not in its association with witchcraft or the paranormal, but in the real human suffering that had occurred there, in the fear that had driven neighbor to turn against neighbor. The story of the Pendle Witch Trials, they realized, was a cautionary tale, a mirror reflecting the darkest aspects of human nature, but also a beacon guiding toward a future where understanding and justice prevailed over fear and superstition. As they departed from the shadow of Pendle Hill, they carried with them not just the memories of a night spent at the threshold of the unknown, but a deeper understanding of the past and its injuring impact on the present. They were no longer the same individuals who had ascended the hill in search of ghosts and legends. They were now guardians of a story that demanded to be told, advocates for those voices from the past that refused to be silenced, voices that through them would continue to speak truths about the human spirit's capacity for both darkness and light. Guardians of Pendle Hill In the aftermath of their harrowing night on Pendle Hill, the group Alex, Jordan, Sam, and Mia found themselves forever changed. They had come face to face with the echoes of history, confronting not just the spectral remnants of a bygone era, but the very essence of human fear and the injustices it can spawn. With the dawn of a new day, they made a solemn pact to share their story with the world, to serve as the voice for those who had been silenced by the passage of time. Their resolve was not born out of a desire for fame or the thrill of recounting tales of the supernatural. Rather, it was driven by a deep-seated conviction that the memory of those who suffered on Pendle Hill, those accused of witchcraft, tried and executed under a cloud of fear and superstition, deserve to be preserved and honored.
they recognized that in telling their story, they had the opportunity to advocate for a broader understanding of the past, to illuminate the dangers of hysteria and the importance of empathy and justice. The group took to social media, blogs, and local history groups, sharing their experiences and the lessons learned. They spoke of the night they spent on the hill, of the visions that had transported them back to 1612, and of the spirits that had reached out from the shadows, desperate for their stories to be heard. They talked about the book they found, its pages filled with spells and cryptic writings, and how it mysteriously vanished, leaving them with more questions than answers. But more than anything, they spoke of Pendle Hill itself not just as a place of mystery and legend, but as a symbol of the complex tapestry of human history. They advocated for its preservation, not just for its ecological and natural beauty, but as a historical and mark, a place where visitors could come to reflect on the past and the lessons it holds for the present and future. Their message resonated, touching the hearts and minds of those who heard it. Pendle Hill, once feared, and shrouded in tales of the supernatural, began to be seen in a new light. It became a place of pilgrimage for those entrusted in history, the paranormal, and the study of human psychology and sociology. The hell's trails were walked not just by thrill-seekers, but by those who sought a deeper connection with the past an understanding of the human capacity for both cruelty and compassion. The Friends' advocacy helped to ensure that the memory of the Pendle witches and their tragic fate would not be forgotten. They became part of the ongoing dialogue about how history is remembered and the importance of looking beyond the sensationalism of witch trials to understand the societal, cultural, and personal dynamics at play. As the group moved forward with their lives, they often reflected on their experience on Pendle Hill. They had sought adventure and encountered the unknown but they had also been given a profound gift, the chance to make a difference, to contribute to the preservation of history and a promotion of understanding and respect for those who lived and suffered in the shadow of the hill. Pendle Hill remained, as it had always been, a place of mystery, its winds whispering ancient secrets its paths winding through history. But now, it was also a beacon of understanding, a reminder of the past's enduring presence in the present, and a testament to the power of empathy and the human spirit's capacity to seek justice and truth. In the end, the friends knew that their journey had not just been about confronting the ghosts of Pendle Hill, but about discovering the ghosts within themselves, the fears, the prejudices, and the capacity for change. They had become guardians of a story that was larger than themselves, a story that would continue to inspire and teach long after their own footsteps had faded from the paths of Pendle Hill.
The witches promise, in a quiet aftermath of their ordeal, as the world around them awakened to the light of a new day. Alex, Jordan, Sam, and me are bathered one last time at the base of Pendle Hill. The hill stood silent, a sentinel overlooking the land. Its secrets failed once more in the mists of time. The book, the mysterious stone they had discovered among the ruins, had vanished as mysteriously as it had appeared, leaving no trace but the memories of its existence and the knowledge it had imparted. Yet, the disappearance of the book was not the end but a beginning, for in its wake, something extraordinary remained a protective mark, invisible to the eye but indelible upon their spirits. This mark, a gift from the past, woven from the spells contained within the book's ancient pages, offered not just protection, but a connection to Pendle Hill and its history, a bond fugged in the crucible of their experience. This mark, they would discover, was more than a symbol. It was a promise, a promise, that the secrets of Pendle Hell, the stories of those who had suffered there, would be kept safe, guarded by those who had come to understand and respect its history. The spirits that lingered, the echoes of the accused witches, had recognized in them not just curiosity seekers, but guardians individuals who had shown the courage to face the darkness and emerge with a deeper understanding of the light. As they left Pendle Hull behind, the group carried with them a profound sense of responsibility. They were custodians of a story that bridged the gap between past and present, a story that, through their advocacy and dedication, would continue to enlighten, to challenge, and to inspire. The protective mark they bore was a reminder of their connection to the hill, a silent witness to the truth that understanding and respect for the past are the keys to guarding its secrets. The world they returned to was the same, yet they were not. They had ventured into the realm of the unknown, faced the shadows of history, and emerged transformed. The lessons of Pendle Hill, the truths uncovered in the depths of night and fear, would stay with them, guiding their paths forward. Pendle Hill, with its brooding presence and whispered secrets, remained a place of mystery a landscape that held the stories of the past close to its heart. But it was no longer a place of fear. For those who knew its true story, who had felt the touch of its history and the weight of its legacy, it was a place of reverence, a monument to the enduring spirit of those who had walked its paths before. The book had disappeared, but its legacy lived on in the hearts and minds of those who had dared to seek its wisdom. And as the group moved forward into the future, they did so with the knowledge that they were not alone. The spirits of Pendle Hill, the memories of the accused, walked with them, a silent testament to the power of empathy, understanding, and the eternal quest for truth. In the end, the story of Pendle Hill was not just a tale of witches and hauntings, but a narrative woven from the threads of human experience, a story of fear and courage, ignorance and enlightenment. And as the final page turned, the epilogue offered not closure, but a continuation, a promise that as long as there were those willing to remember, to learn, and to respect, the secrets of Pendle Hill would remain safe, 
whispered on the wind, guarded by the keepers of its history forevermore. And so, dear listeners, our journey to Pendle Hill comes to a close. Through the mists of time and the veil of the supernatural, we've traversed the dark chapters of history, guided by the light of understanding and the echoes of those long gone. Our friends Alex, Jordan, Sam, and Miu have shown us that the past, with all its shadows and mysteries, still speaks to us, teaching lessons of empathy, courage, and the importance of guarding the truths that history holds. As we part ways with Pendle Hill, let us carry forward the spirit of their experience, a reminder that the ghosts of the past are not just remnants to be feared, but voices to be heard, understood, and respected. The secrets of Pendle Hill, and indeed of all such places steeped in history, remain safe with those who approach with an open heart and a willing mind to learn from the lessons they offer. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the shadows and into the light of understanding. As we conclude this tale, remember that the end of one story is but the whisper of another waiting to be told. May you always find the courage to seek the truth, to listen to the stories of the past, and to keep the flame of curiosity alive. This has been the tale of Pendle Hill, a story of fear, mystery, and enlightenment. Until our paths cross again in the realm of stories yet untold, keep the legacy of the past close to your heart and let it guide you with wisdom and compassion. Good night, dear listeners, and may the mysteries of the world inspire you, always. <laughs>